Meyer and Eric Doggett with uh, episode 23 of Photog TV. We're super excited today because we've got special guest Jack Hollingsworth with us today. Say hi, Jack. Um, hey, guys. <laughs> hey. That was totally not prompted at all. No, not at all. <laughs> um, so, uh, like I said, we're really excited to have um, you know Jack here with us today. He's brought his entire uh, truckload of goodies for his iPhoneography and everything, and uh, so we're going to learn about all that. But um, to start out with today, we always start with the news. And so, Eric, what did you uh, have to talk about today? Oh, well, my big story this week was that uh, Adobe finally uh, kind of formally announced CS6. So for a while there, and, and actually still right now, you could download the, uh, the beta of, of Photoshop CS6 and kind of play, play around with it. And then you would start to see, they were really good about, like, kicking out these little videos every now and then. It's like new features in Photoshop, new features in Illustrator, and all this kind of stuff. And they finally came out this week and said, okay, here's CS6, here is you know everything that's included. And uh, it looks to be like a very, um, a really kind of a beefy upgrade for people that have uh, kind of been religious about upgrading Photoshop in the past. I think the biggest thing, and, and you know we're not going to get into all the, the features here and everything like that, but, but one of the biggest things that they announced that, that to me uh, was interesting was they've, they've changed their pricing model. So before you would just pay for your upgrade and, and get it and then wait for the next one. And while you can kind of continue that, you know, I think Photoshop uh, CS6 Extended, which is the one that uh, includes the 3D functions, uh, runs for $3.99 for the upgrade. Now you can still do that. They're also announcing something called cloud services. So you can pay a monthly fee and get access to everything they sell within that um, and additionally get uh, access to their what they call their cloud services. So it's like uh, kind of like a dropbox esh kind of online storage and collaboration thing. Um, so I think that service is going to run you know, 49, it's 49 bucks a month when they launch uh, next month, early next month. And at first I was like, why am I going to do that? I'm just going to upgrade to the, like I've been doing. And I had uh, sent a, a text to, to Matt Klaskowski over at uh, NAPP and uh, asked him about it. And he was like, no, 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 the, the cloud's going to be the way to go. And as I looked into it a little bit more, I also saw that they, they announced this thing where if you own Photoshop um, already, you qualify for a discount of uh, uh, gets a price down to twenty nine dollars a month for for that 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 uh, rental option basically is what it is uh, for the first year. So think about it. starting next month, you could spend if you already own one of the products, you could spend twenty nine dollars a month for a year to have access to everything they have. Um, seems pretty compelling in terms of okay, thirty bucks for a year, so that's what seven hundred some odd dollars. Um, that's probably what I was spent uh, upgrading the the suite I have, which is the the production premium, um, and I would have spent it again next year if they came out with another version. So I don't know. Uh, what about you, Dustin? Are you are you keeping up? Let's back up first. Do you keep up with like your Photoshop in terms of like the latest versions, or are you like, oh, I'm still I just got layers on version three? Yeah, <laughs> um, I, yeah. It's, it's a well-known fact that I'm a little behind on keeping my uh, my Photoshop nice and polished. Um, I would say that um, the stuff that I find to be really worth investing in all has to do with my workflow, and um, my workflow is more about multiple images, so of course my default is always going to be uh, uh, Lightroom, and so I really don't use Photoshop enough, um, especially with all the additional features they have to you know, justify the price to upgrade or the additional monthly expense if we go with the cloud pricing. Uh, because really the only thing I use Photoshop for is Liquify, and I've got CS4, and it does a good job. So um, pretty much anything else that um, that I need, that I would need Photoshop for, um, if it was something like really intense stray hair removal or something like that, my photo lab actually does that for me. So I just oh, pay them cool. a one-time fee, and they'll do blemish removal or stray hair removal. Um, because especially during the spring when we're doing things like senior portraits and stuff which are ripe with you know blemishes and stray hairs and stuff like that, I don't have the time to uh, actually retouch each one of those photos. So my lab does it for me and they just send me quick proofs that I can double check before they print them. So um, I'd like to say that I'm always on top and having things like CS6 and all the latest stuff and everything, but for my workflow I just 
just don't need it. So. Yeah. Now I know it, I know it kind of goes against the grain of today's topic, but Jack, I wanted to ask you: Are you? How are you as far as Photoshop goes? You keep up with upgrades? Have you been no. following this at all? Or no, I'm, I am so the wrong guy to ask. I'm like Dustin. We we have CS4 here in the office that my wife and I kind of uh, limp through, but all my retouching uh, since I've been digital, which is eight years now, goes to India. Oh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean every 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 single frame except for maybe you know. Several hundred, uh, I shoot it. I put it on a, a, a either in Dropbox or you send it file or on a hard drive. It goes to India, gets retouched, gets sent back to me. So you I'm know, sure. Used, that, go ahead. I'm sure they're on like uh, you know a CS1 if if it even exists. Uh, who knows? That's a, no, that's a good point because I actually use a company. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's based out of India for masking work because I just am not a fan of sitting there and doing masking work. And so I'll send that off, and they do an amazing job, and I get it like a day later. It's, wow. it's pretty incredible. Oh, dude, you, you are, you, I mean, your, your work is so good. I mean, real. I was just talking with somebody the other day here in Austin, but you are like Mr. Photoshop. Yeah. I mean, I, I look at your work and go, oh, my God, how did he do that? <laughs> so, Jack, yeah, that can you is, come on? It's like so beyond week? me. Right. <laughs> Can you come on next week, Jack, and do that? Do that again. <laughs> there you go. Eric's gonna be uh, puffing out his chest. Yeah, no kidding, I, man. Photo Jack just gave me a plug on the on my awesome, show. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> well, you are awesome. You are awesome. <laughs> All right, so that here he comes. So the so CS6. That was my big news story. I'm looking forward to it. What have you got, Dustin? I think you had something you wanted to mention. Yeah, actually, um, I had a couple of things. Um, I. Uh, because I'm always one-upping you, right, Eric? Um, now, I've got uh, one story I think that a lot of people have been uh, kind of wondering about is the new Google Drive. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's a lot like Dropbox and a bunch of other cloud storage servers, uh, services. Um, however, it, it's got a lot of neat features that I found could be really essential, especially if you look at their business solutions. But, um, you know, uh, it's uh, a lot of, you know, it's, integrated with email and, and, you know, all that stuff, calendar. But the nice thing about Drive is that um, what it does is, you know, it stores all your stuff. Um, however, the pricing on it is extremely attractive. In fact, I think currently right now I pay for Dropbox 50 gigs online, and it's about 100 bucks a year, which is not bad. Um, however, I think, and I could be wrong, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think with Google Drive you get 100 gigs and I think it's either 50 bucks or maybe it's 100 bucks, maybe it's the same price as uh, Dropbox, but it's twice as much storage. Mm. Now, of course, you know, everyone always kind of worries about, you know, well, if you store it on Google, then they have access to everything. But, I mean, you know, come on, people, we live in a digital age, and so anything you do, whether it's on Facebook or Twitter or whatever, it's out there. So, um, you know, just keep a common sense about it. You know, don't store your credit card information in there. It, but for the most part, especially for photographers, this can work out really well because you could share these drives. So for me, when I shoot weddings, you know, I've got gigs and gigs of uh, raw uh, images, and I don't process my own uh, wedding photography images. I outsource it. And so uh, whether I'm using a professional service like PhotoFafa out in California, where I have to uh, send them a drive. Um, but uh, Jack just texted me. It's me. Sorry, I was texting Jack. But um, anyways, <laughs> so um, but uh, if I'm using someone who, you know, maybe doing photo processing from their own private office or whatever, then we can, I can share my images from Google Drive with them. And then um, depending on, you know, what process you use, like I, we use Lightroom, um, I'm not quite sure yet because I haven't had a chance to test it out, but um, you can use some of the features like creating XMP files or, you know, using, um, you know, the, ca the catalog files because we make an individual catalog file for each wedding. Um, then whoever's off-site working on my images for me, um, as they're making changes to the images, perhaps I could actually be updating the files live on Google Drive. So, um, you know, if they're halfway through editing some of the wedding and they've got questions, um, theoretically, I could be able to log onto Google Drive or connect to it from Lightroom and open it in Lightroom and see what changes they've already made. And we can make a discussion right then and there. That's so, interesting. Um, I'm, I'm always looking for uh, uh, um, solutions where 
it's uh, easy for me and uh, anybody who's working with me to be able to you know, get work done, do it efficiently without having to mail flash drives back and forth to each other, stuff like that. And if, if, if it can work the way I'm hoping it can work for me in my studio, then I'm, I'm all over it. So. Now, see, this is interesting because I, I will, I'll take a look at it. But I, I tell you what, what, what will keep me with Dropbox for now is, is the integration it has with in the mobile space with, mm -hmm. with various applications. And yes. until Google starts to to make inroads there, um, it's it's just not even um, on my radar in terms of of, uh, mm -hmm. of image posting. How about you, Jack? I totally agree. I'm not even sure that it's iOS compatible on the on the mobile app side of things. So, I think it pretty pretty much we we got a way to go. But I'm I'm also a big Dropbox fan. Yeah, but I'll I'll, I'll definitely keep an eye on it. I mean, it's they're not, and I think one of the websites it was Gizmodo and Gadget. One of them did a review of uh, online um, space, uh, service providers like that, and I want to say there was like ten different companies that they reviewed that had some sort of uh, online storage thing like that. So. Hmm. Um, well, and the other thing that I was going to say is um, that uh, this really cool thing I found off of uh, Petapixel, um, they have an article that says, Google Maps Photo Tour feature lets you visit landmarks virtually. So I watched the video. And from what it's able to explain, um, what it's done is it aggregates pictures that people have uploaded to either uh, Picasa or uh, Photogonia. And um, as long as they're geotagged or assigned to some you know, uh, location, then they use software to merge all these images together of certain areas like wow. visual landmarks. Um, one of the examples in the video, which you can find on YouTube, um, just uh, you know, look for 3D photo tours on Google Maps on YouTube, um, wow. and you can do like a virtual tour of uh, the Roman Colosseum, of um, you know Statue of Liberty, and, and other places like that. So um, I'll be doing a virtual tour of Eric's house later this afternoon. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> yeah. we need to Google. Uh, we need to Google a Street View car to come driving around here, and you know, make him do a couple of donuts in the backyard. Yeah, everyone well, can see how badly your yard needs to get mowed. It does. It does. Actually, today's the day too. It um, is. It is, is it? Is it now? Is this similar, uh, Dustin, to that like that photosynth thing that Microsoft was talking about way back when? There was like you could kind of walk around and see like a, you know, you um, be in a three D space by looking at pictures of that other people had taken. You know, uh, from the video, it wasn't exactly clear to me if you could actually like walk around and see and stuff like that. I would assume that it's kind of a mixture of both because there's one thing like virtual tours where they'll take one snapshot shaped like a donut using a special lens and then they unwrap that donut in Photoshop and then throw it into QuickTime VR and then it looks like you're spinning around in a room, you know, like for a real estate sale or something like that. Um, but with this, it appears that you can actually like walk around and see from different perspectives and stuff, you know, what the inside of, you know, the Roman Colosseum would actually look like if you were actually there. So, um, it looks like really interesting stuff. You can actually check it out, you know, today if you go to Google Maps, if you, um, you know, like search for a famous landmark and then look for a little pin drop for Google Places and see if it has the photo tour um, link underneath if there's a picture there on the badge on the map. So that's, uh, that's how you can check it out. But watch the video on YouTube and then uh, it'll kind of show you how you can go about doing it. But it just, it seemed really cool. So for people that, you know, um, are thinking about going on a trip to Paris and they want to see like how it actually looks in downtown or down by the Eiffel Tower on the Seine or whatever, then theoretically you can do it this way. So That's cool. We have to check it out. It, it is pretty cool. So anyways, uh, that wraps up our news section. Everyone's like, hurry, get on to Jack. So Jack, we're going to hand it over to you, man. Uh, first off, just a real quick intro for those of you that aren't familiar with Jack. Um, Jack Hollingsworth has a very large following on Twitter. Um, he totally like dwarfs anything that Eric and I have combined. Um, but um, Jack and I met a couple years back, just kind of talking about social media when it was really starting to blossom. And then um, you know over the years, just seeing 
his following get larger and larger with his passion, especially for most recently with iPhones and, and taking pictures with them. Um, he's been a special guest on Creative Live doing a workshop with him, which you can go to Creative Live and you can buy a copy of his workshop, um, which I highly recommend, especially if you want to broaden your creative horizons. Um, but uh, I think we just wanted him on the show so we could see all of his toys. So. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You and everybody else, right? <laughs> All right, Jack. Well, um, yeah, so why don't you kind of tell us a little bit about, you know, I guess, you know, what kind of sparked this movement for you? Well, how, how about we do this? How about I'll jump into the, 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 the gear uh, because that seems to be, uh, you know, what everybody is interested in. And then I'll wrap my story around the gear, you know, as we go through things. How's that sound? That sounds great. Good. Okay. So I, I have, uh, which you don't see me, but to my right I have about 20 items I'm going to show you. All of these things that I use at different points in my I iPhone uh, photography. And I shoot, for the most part, every day. I shoot and post somewhere uh, on social every day. So I'm really, really really in love with my iPhone, passionate about the iPhone, the mobile photography movement. So I think that's going to be quite evident as you see things. Here's one cool toy um, for you DSLR folks. This is basically just a hot shoe holder. I think you can find it at hotshoeholder.com. So uh, when I'm doing, uh, you know, and I'm, I haven't given up my, my, uh, my DSLR, I still do a lot of that stuff. And then I grab this for either uh, GPS information or behind the scenes production shots because of course JPEG raw, JPEG raw. And then if you're an educator like me then uh, then you can use that as uh, you know uh, a teleprompter. So <laughs> I can actually just kind of record video on location so that's pretty cool. iPhone.com, um, I think it's hotshoeholder.com. Uh, this is a cool recent toy that I use called the Moby slider that literally goes in my camera bag look at, look at this just like whoa for for nice. anybody that's like into shooting video yeah. and all you need is this move right here just tiny little moves little smooth it's smooth as silk uh, it's mobyslider.com wow um, it's really cool it's super light it goes right inside my camera bag and it's great for video. When I'm shooting video, I'm usually shooting with an app called Filmic Pro, which is probably the most popular video app on the market. Here's another little toy, Joby. Uh, a little cool tripod, right? With now, Jack, a, how, how are you mounting these to the camera? Because they look like they've all got standard... Uh mounts there. Do you have to have some sort of frame on there to get started? Yeah, th this one I'm disappointed. It does not have a quarter 20 uh, and it, it looks like it does but it needs a quarter 20 on the bottom so that you can mount it to a tripod. This is really more for tabletop and ground level shots. Mm -hmm. What about as far as like putting the camera on there or putting the, putting the phone on there? You need some sort of case for that phone to, to give you that thread? Yeah, uh, you know, for for example, and I'm going to show you, yes, you would need like, uh, I have it on another thing, but I have several cool. cases that accept that go right on to the quarter 20 here. Okay. And I'm going to show you that in there in a minute. Actually, My, I've, I've got a sample. There's a thing called the Glyph. Absolutely. And, um, yeah, this uh, this little guy right here, you can get, I think, what maybe like 12 bucks or 15 bucks, but it doubles as... Um, Let's see, you would just take this and stick it on like here, and then it's got the quarter thread on here. It would hold your phone like this, but it can also double as like a kickstand or something. So if you want to watch a video, but, um, but yeah, so you can cool. do something like this to get it on that Moby slider. Yeah, I, I also have, if you've looked at my recent uh, trip to Italy, uh, and I think you can find that on Vimeo, I'll send you a link later, but you see this little toy a lot. It's a Vanguard Multi-Mount 6, so imagine my tripod going here, and this is my bar, and that's kind of how I shoot. So here's my DSLR, right, mounted to this, and there's my iPhone mounted over here. Oh my gosh. So this is really nothing more than a, uh, a $20 snap mount. Let's see if I can get it off. So, a um, little snap mount, you stick your phone in there, you can see that it has a, a quarter 20 there, 
and then a quarter 20 for the horizontal position. So I love it because I'm shooting now, like if I'm doing a commercial job, you'll always see me shooting with a DSLR and shooting with an iPhone at the same time, and it really is surprising the, the, the contrast, the comparison, the files that I'm building up between I shot this with my DSLR and I shot this with my iPhone, and I got to tell you, a lot of my stuff, I don't know if I'm just not that good with my DSLR, uh, it's pretty hard to distinguish between the two. Um, this is another little toy that I use. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite. Uh, it is from the Supermount iTrek. Can you read that? Yeah, and I'm, uh, yeah. I'm taking notes on all these so we can yeah. have them. <laughs> so here we are. It's uh, This is kind of a universal, uh, universal uh, tripod holder. What I like about this is that we'll accept any case. I mean, I don't have to take the iPhone out of uh, my custom case, which is my Snyder case, to, to use it, right? Oh, nice. It's yeah, like a little weird. vice grip there. It is, yeah. And you can you know, put your Android, your Windows phone. If you have a case, uh, which I have many different kinds of cases, you can see it has a quarter 20 on the bottom and then uh, another quarter 20 on the side as well. So this is really cool. I actually have two different versions of that. I have that with the case and then one without the the uh, the vice grip part of it, but I think that's kind of a pet peeve of mine. You know, you always every, all everybody has proprietary cases. This is one of my cases. It's my Instagram case with my Instagram photos. Um, to put this in a quarter twenty grip for an iP uh, for an uh, for a, a tripod, you need to take it out of the case and then you know put it into some other kind of case. This is cool because. I have like three or four of these in my bag. I don't have to take anything out of my case. I can just take it out, stick it in there, boom, put it on my tripod. I'm good to go. That's so nice. I love that. And then I figured out this, which was kind of clever, I thought. Pat myself on the back. You know the steady pod? You know what that is? Where yeah. you, like, uh, it's got a little footprint, a little retractable wire. I can step on this. I'll show you here in a minute. So it's a retractable uh, for really, it's kind of a makeshift tripod. Now I'm going to lock it. Okay. So now I've got I've got this really taut, and now here's my iPod. Yeah, I mean, oh, we're my iPhone, where I can just kind of move around almost like a little steady cam. And this, what I just showed you, is the device that I stuck onto the quarter 20 so I can take my iPhone off and on. But it's really kind of cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So you can really notice a difference in, in that versus... It's the, the it is that. surprisingly significant. Huh. And anybody that shot video with your iPhone, uh, even if you run it through Final Cut Pro, know that it's really, it's hard to handhold something and make it look cool. This will probably increase the likelihood of you stabilizing that image probably 200%. It's really good. Wow. Wow. Uh, here's something also that I use. Uh, let me get this out of the case. This is a danglet. I don't necessarily suggest, like I'm shooting in weird places, like off off, off ships and off near water. So now I'm basically have this little danglet, and I'm putting now this in there. So now I'm hooking that like that, and I'm shooting. So oh, if I drop it, boom. I'm only dropping it off my neck, not into the water. Oh, by the way, I never, ever, ever shoot without two cameras, ever. So I'm looking, I have an iPhone 4 as my backup, and then, of course, my 4S is my main camera, but I'm about to get another 4S so that I have two backups when I'm on location. Wow. This is probably one of my favorite toys. This is my Zag power pack, uh, literally. I was, I was about to ask you, with all the apps you're doing and stuff and the shooting and everything, you're probably burning through that battery. on the Burning through like there yeah. is no tomorrow. And you can see here, this has two USB ports there, right? Wow. So this extends the life of my iPhone 4S probably about three times. Oh, so wow. I, liter I literally plug it in, plug it into my phone, and then I just stick it in my pocket, and that's how I, I shoot. So I never leave home. 
I have two of these things. I think they run about 80 bucks each, and then they power right in the wall. And then I just stick it in my pocket. And that, and that, so um, so that cable doesn't control. get in the way of any of those uh, mounts that you put on there or anything Well, like I mean, you, ch you charge it beforehand. So uh, a lot of the times when I'm having coffee or I'm on a break, I'm charging. I'm using this to basically charge, you know, on location. If I don't, if I don't want to look that goobery, then I go to the Mophie, which is a lot slicker and cooler. That's the one I got. That's the one you got? You stick your iPhone in there, boom. It just charges. I have a couple of these. And then I even have a small juice pack which plugs into the bottom of my my phone port for some extra about an hour's worth of juice. So Mophie juice pack, this is also from Mophie. Uh, this extends, what would you say, Eric, at least 100% of the life of what uh, you get without it? Yeah, totally, and I need it now that I'm using the, I've got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on all the time, so uh, it, may, it makes a difference, anything helps. So one thing I don't like about it is, it's got that kind of non-standard, what is it, mini USB plug or something like that to, to charge it. So you can't, yeah. in the case, you've got to use their cable to, to charge and sync. But other than that... Why, do, people, why do they do that? I, it's so irritating. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, back to Zag. This is what I use when I'm in the car. Cigarette lighter, two USB ports so that I'm uh, powering up both devices, both my iPhone 4 and my 4S while I'm driving. That's part of Zag, and of course, speaking of Zag, here's my little ear, earbuds that I use to listen to music while I'm shooting. Uh, I got this from Photo Jojo. Photo Jojo. I'll talk lenses uh, for a minute. It's okay. It really comes with a tripod. You can see in its own case, it's kind of like a big monster telephoto for your iPhone, but I find it really awkward. Um, this is the size of it. Oh, wow. It's like, it's like huge. <laughs> um, my my father-in-law actually gave that to me for Christmas this past year, and I, I agree <laughs> with you. It's um, it's 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 neat in some ways because it definitely zooms in a whole lot more. But I do find that it's really soft. Um, the the focus on it's not really yes. sharp. I mean, it's it's like a little souvenir mm -hmm. lens essentially. Yes. Uh, the other the other little clip-on is the Allo clip, uh, which literally let me take this phone out. Of my, so li literally, uh, this clips on to your clips on your phone, just like that. So this is a combined uh, wide-angle lens, a fisheye lens, and a macro lens all in one. Oh wow! Who makes that? What is that? Allo clip. O l l o c l i p. Allo clip. That's nice because it doesn't require a case. It is nice. You just kind of take it off and stick it on. What I find a little disturbing is that it's prone to scratch the the lens because it will only fit on a an iPhone that's caseless. Oh. So like when you're sticking it off and on, they say it doesn't scratch. I found in that not to be the case, but it's a lot cheaper than what I'm about to show you, which is my favorite. So that's the Allo Clip. Uh, but my favorite by far is this little puppy made by uh, Schneider, and it's called the iPro lens. It's literally two lenses in one, a fisheye lens and a, uh, and a f wide angle lens. So it comes with its own case. So I'm going to take that off. You can kind of see it right there. What's cool about this is this is a glass lens. This is the same Schneider that makes enlarger lenses and camera lenses. So this literally is a glass lens. Look at that. It's a bayonet mount. <laughs> it is a freaking bayonet mount. So I'm going to find my iPhone, which always has my Schneider case on it. See the little bayonet mount there? And I'm going to literally put it on there, and boom, I'm ready to go. That's, that's, that's nice. amazing. I like that. Yeah, and it's it is a kill by far. This I this Schneider lens, and then of course when you want to put it back, you stick it on there. It has a, it has its own proprietary case so that I can use it as a tripod as well, or or, or a hand grip. But this outshines times ten everything on the market. It is better glass. 
it's sharp edge to edge, except for the uh, the fish eyes a little bit soft when you're doing it, and it's really pretty spectacular. I think it runs the kit runs. Oh gosh, I think it runs about 99 bucks, something like that. But it's well worth the investment. And they're about to launch, uh, which I have tested and love, uh, a new telephoto, which is equivalent of about a 60 or 65 millimeter. So if you have had the experience of shooting with people with your iPhone, you know you get too close, what happens? It exaggerates because it's like shooting with a wide angle lens, right? Mm -hmm. So this is like the new telephoto, 2X telephoto with Schneider, will be like shooting with a 65. You can get right up in somebody's face, fill the frame, boom, it's amazing. And they're also coming out with a macro as well. This is pretty cool. This is a diff case by my friend uh, over at diff, D-I-F-F. And look at that. It's like a lens shade. Oh, that's nice. interesting. That's cool. Yeah, so it's got a, it's got a quarter 20s. And quarter 20s on the bottom for vertical and horizontal position. So you get in there, you put your iPhone in there, boom, naked, and then it snap mounts. I find it really pretty useful for shooting location in bright sun. Uh, and this is version 2 of it. This is kind of swivels up and down. So that's the diff case. A uh, little cool little toy from... Um, Moseymount, moseymount.com. You can see its own proprietary case with fold-up legs and little. Oh, that's cool. A little swivel action. Yeah. So cool for tabletop when you're just obsessed with shooting your food and your coffee, which I know many of you are. <laughs> you know, my uh, my six-year-old would like that because yeah. I've got him playing with that stop motion app, and I forget the name of it. Um, it's not I stop motion, but it's one of those, and you just need to set the you just need to set the phone level, and then you can do your little stop motion thing. Yeah, yeah. But I I had to build a rig out of a magic arm and a, and a clamp, <laughs> and I had to clamp the phone just to get it to be still, and that would have worked great. That's awesome. Well, speaking about rigs, here's a much more sophisticated rig. Uh, this one was actually made for me, so you'll have to forgive the the uh, photo jack insignia on it. Uh, but this is the M cam. You can kind of see that, and that's the way the front looks. Uh, it was formerly the uh, Auli Bubo, and now it is the M-CAM, M-C-A-M. And this is where your iPhone goes in a rubber casing in the back. And uh, it's really pretty simple to use. It's heavy. It adds girth to your hand. It stabilizes if you're shooting video, and it's a screw mount. So now I have three lenses. Literally. And it's, it's also glass lenses. I would say that they're not as good as the Schneider lens, but uh, they're not too terribly far behind it. It comes with a macro, a wide angle, and a fisheye. Right here I have the... Oh, and a telephoto as well. So that's how I'm shooting video or sometimes stills. And if I want to add light, I use my micro light or really any LED light. Yeah. Or I have some CTO tape to the front of it. And I put it in the cold shoe on the top of that. And, you know, I'm good to go. So mm -hmm. now I'm shooting video or kind of shooting nice portraits at dusk. And, you know, this, this thing is a $200 LED light, so it's not cheap. This kit costs less than two hundred dollars, lens included. So, uh, but this is a good. This light is a really great, strong, powerful light if you're shooting video with your iPhone. And then, of course, it comes with auxiliary lenses like this. Nice. Yeah, the prices on those LEDs have gone down. I, I think they over have. the last couple of years. I have a joy case. Uh, for if I want to slosh around in in shallow water. Uh, literally from the Joy Factory. Um, I think it's called the Joy Case. Uh, it's not meant for scuba diving, but uh, it's fine for like you know going five to eight feet in a pool, or if you're just sloshing around at the beach. It's pretty cool. And then if you are sloshing around at the beach, this uh, Pelican Case is pretty cool as well. So. Um, nice. 
Yeah, it's got, you know, audio port, so if you're taking it to the beach and you want to listen to tunes, you don't want sand to get in your phone, this is the tool right here. Cool little tripod that I use from uh, Vanguard called the Trek Tech. Is it Vanguard? Oh, no, it's from Trek Tech. So you can use it one in two ways. Uh, I can use it as a, just a base and stick my my camera phone to the top of that and get super low or I can attach it and extend it a little bit with a ball head on the top and you know I shoot this is kind of I, I don't use this as a tripod I use it really kind of like a grip when I'm shooting video using a Filmic Pro app I kind of just like feeling holding it stabilizing it uh, but it also doubles up as a nice tripod Hey, Jack, before you go forward, um, one question we just had on that Pelican case. Does it allow you to actually, the, the, the water case, does it allow you to touch screen and, and actually have control over it? Or no. Is it just... No, it does not. So you I'll can't you. do video, I guess, if you're recording ahead of time, but you can't get in there and start, stop it. Yeah, you gotta you got to do all that before. You can't access the functionality of the phone once it's in there. But you can see it's got a little rod outlet. You know, I, it's not meant as an underwater device. There are underwater devices. I do not have them because I'm not an underwater kind of a guy. Uh, this is a little more sophisticated. I've used it only one time. This is the uh, Fostex AR4i for, like, killer audio on your phone. Can you see that? Wow. Yeah. It's like killer audio. Like, if you're an audio nut, an audio file, and you want to record... Uh, you know, talking heads or your client or your bride or your groom or somebody at the reception. This is the puppy right there. It is really, really powerful. Is it just uh, their mics or does that actually give you inputs on it? Uh, it's their mics with input. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I have a bunch more stuff, but that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um... How much of this are you taking on a shoot? Is that like okay, a half of honestly, it, a third of it, all of it? Everything that you see that I just showed you, if if it's a real job, it all goes with me. So I have now my uh, an iPhone backpack that uh, that houses all of this stuff, and it generally you know goes with me on a job. Now. Again, I'm, I'm just beginning to start to shoot iPhone jobs, but as of right now, I'm shooting DSLR jobs, and this stuff just comes along to play with. So I have my own backpack for it, uh, and then inside the backpack, I have a small fanny pack so that I can just take the toys that I use during the day for my iPhone, put them in my fanny pack, and that's pretty much it. I was going to say, um, the um, have you done, like, just straight up shoots where the people know ahead of time or they're seeking you out because you're bringing all this gear because they, they want it shot with an iPhone or anything just, like that? Or? Just, yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent question. That's really where I want to go and I'm starting. Um, you'll, you'll, I actually am shooting an in-house wedding with my iPhone uh, in about two weeks in Dallas and I was hired by them to shoot with my iPhone. They do not want me to bring my DSLR. Wow. They said, under no circumstance, bring your iPhone. That's what I want you to shoot our in-house wedding. Uh, and I'm also shooting a, uh, uh, a, mu a musician headshot in about two weeks. And we'll be shooting probably 60, 70% with my iPhone and then a few DSLR shots as well. So it's you know, starting. One person that, that got uh, a job specifically, just they just wanted iPhone, and it was like a a national ad thing, and it was just uh, just wanted iPhone shots, and they that person had been doing really well with them, and uh, so that's pretty interesting. Huh. Yeah, I th I'm we're, I'm 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 not the first. I wish I could claim that I was the first to do it, but I'm seeing it because of the circles that I run in, uh, and I think we're going to be seeing a lot more. Now, again, I'm not advocating that everybody like drop their DSLR. I still love the DSLR, and it's not an either or choice. It's an and both choice. Um, but I think for those that master the iPhone, there are opportunities uh, that we've never seen in the history of photography before, and it's pretty exciting. 
One of the things that I was just thinking of, because um, now you've got me thinking like, okay, what are all these ways that I could do shoots now, um, like whether it's senior portraits or headshots or weddings, um, and with all this gear now that enables us to do that, um, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking how cool would it be, especially with features like iCloud, um, you could set up your own personal Wi-Fi hotspot and then have, um, you know, images as you're shooting from your iPhone uploaded to iCloud, and then you could have uh, an assistant uh, that's using your iPad and using apps like, you know, uh, Instagram or Snapseed or whatever and editing those images and then posting them to, like, say, a dedicated site for, you know, that particular wedding or something. So they're getting nice polished images ready to view mm -hmm. um, live or, you know, within a few minutes. Um, so uh, I don't know. I've, I've always really like the idea of having the iPhone being the camera, the capture tool, and then having, you know, via iCloud, the iPad being the editing tool because it's so portable and it's all, you know, mm -hmm. touch screen interface and everything else. So um, have you done anything like that where um, you know, do you do you own an iPad or are you got a I computer do. where? I, I do indeed own several of them. Uh, I find, at least with my mobile photography, Dustin, that I'm I'm almost 100% attached to my iPhone. So if you look at my Instagram feed, which you can see, you know, if you're not on Instagram, you can go to, I think, gramfeed.com forward slash my name, and you'll see all my, you know, 3,000 plus Instagram photos. Uh, every one of those was shot and processed on an iPhone. Mm. Um, so that's kind of my workflow. That's sort of how I have grown up, you know, in the space. Uh, you know, I've, I've messed around a little bit with Snapseed on the iPad. Uh, and a few other apps, and I'm sure I will get there, but right now I'm pretty much an iPhone guy. Cool. And, and again, it should come as no surprise. I mean, I find it a lot more freeing. I'm not a Photoshop guy, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we were talking with er er Eric early, earlier. Uh, it's kind of like having Photoshop in your pocket, a printing press in your pocket, a camera store in your pocket, uh, a megaphone in your pocket, and a, and a Super Bowl audience in your pocket, all <laughs> right there, all the time. Sure. And it is powerful. It's not only powerful, it's free. So Jack, I'm, more, I'm, I'm more attached to my photography now than I ever have been in my 30-year career, period. What's, what's your take on the whole <clears throat> Instagram, Facebook deal? Do you see anything that's uh, a positive or a negative of that? Or does that affect your, your outlook on that app in any way? Not really. I'm, I, I think I'm one of the few guys that sees it as a positive thing. Uh, I like it. Uh, and I think we'll look back at it historically and go, oh my gosh, that was that was such a a, a boom for uh, for mobile photography in general. So I think we have to take the owners at their face value, which I know will be difficult for a lot of you that are even watching this. Uh, they said they're going to leave independent. Instagram is a great app, fantastic community of photographers, some f great great work, and I think it's only up up and away. Uh, as we move into the future. You know, I just got this totally harebrained idea, but what if we did a special, like, Photog TV episode where um, we set up a, a hotspot somewhere and you shoot and maybe do some demonstration work with all of your iPhone gear, and we also film it live using the Google Hangouts feature via iPhone so people can watch as we're filming you do this little mini test shoot or something like that. I just think that people would get a huge kick out of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> I love how Dustin just commits me to things like yeah. this. Just uh, yeah. all of a sudden. <laughs> Why Eric, we? we got to get you out of your man cave sometime. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you gotta, you got to get out of that CS6 stuff, dude. Yeah. You, need to, you need to go outside and, and, and breathe the air and feel the sunshine. You mean I can't just be a photographer with a computer? No, no, that's, no, I have no, to no, go out. No, 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 dude. <laughs> Well, um, I just uh, wanted to quickly see if either Christian or Heather had any questions for Jack before we, uh, before we sign off. So if you've got anything you want to ask, either speak up or type it in the chat window. Um, but, uh, you know, as we're, uh, as we're going through all this, uh, it's just, for me, it's incredible to see, um, you know, all the stuff that people are developing, you know, uh, for the iPhone. I remember when the Ali Bubo first came out, um, I was just, you know, I, it just totally opened my mind as far as, you know, all the things that are capable now, and it's all mobile, and it's all wireless, so, you know, it could be so many things going on at once, you know, people can be watching what you're shooting as it's happening, while it's being edited, you know, things like that, so 
it's just been a really cool evolution of watching what people are doing because this one gadget is their inspiration. Let, let, me, let me give you real quickly my, my, my app spiel. Uh, there, there are 10,000 photo apps in iTunes. 10,000 photo apps in iTunes. I own about 200 of them. I use about 10 of them on a regular basis. The ones that I use on a regular basis, my favorites and my all-time favorite, which I... Uh-oh, I think we got frozen here. And Jack's back. Jack's back. Yeah, we had a little problem here on the... Uh, Sorry about that, folks. The website, mm. got, uh, the, the Photog account got kicked out of the uh, Hangout, but I'm just trying okay. to, to rejoin it now. Can you re-invite okay. the, mm -hmm. the page, Dustin? Sure, I'll, I'll get on that. So a little hiccup, folks. No problem. There we go. Which is amazing because we pay a lot of money for this service. I don't see. What <laughs> 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 so. Um, yeah. Am I on again? Um, we're well, on right we're, now. We're on, the YouTube on, side. on air on the YouTube side. We're just waiting for the live stream to kick back in. So. Um, you want me to hold on? Yeah, give me just another second here. Okay. You guys going to the uh, Scott Kelby uh, Google Plus conference coming up? I guess. Yeah, yeah we would be we interested. Were, if it's just we talked about that. Was it last week, Dustin? Uh, yeah, last week or two weeks ago, I think. It sounds <laughs> interesting. Uh, it's just a little too close in terms of mm -hmm. from when they announced it. How about you? No. Yeah, I was also same way. I'd love to go, but I'm not going to be able to do it. I think it's one of those things where you know. If you have kids and they're in school, it's kind of hard to make a sudden last-minute decision like, oh, yes. let's go to California. Yeah. So, yeah, for, for all you uh, people out there, the, the workshop, you know, gods, when you decide on this stuff, give us a little bit more notice. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't just leave out, you know, a whole bunch of uh, craft dinner and hope that my kids know how to make <laughs> dinner for themselves. So. Well, you could. Well, Eric, we'll just uh, yeah, keep going, keep along. going. So, and, and uh, but Jack, you were talking about some of the apps yeah. that you use on a regular basis. So yeah, there's, there's 10,000 photo apps on iTunes. Uh, I own well over 200 of them, but I use only about 10. The 10 that I use the most are an app called Camera Plus, which is my main camera replacement app. That's camera with a plus sign. Um, uh, Instagram, of course, is how I share most of my photos online. Snapseed is one of my favorite authoring, uh, filtering and processing tools. PicFX, P-I-C-F-X, is where I get a lot of my grunge and texture stuff, as is Pic Grunger, uh, P-I-C Grunger, all one word. Uh, I should look at my camera, but really, I'm I'm pretty basic. Um, I you know I'm really anti slapping filters on everything. As a matter of fact, if you look at my Instagram feed, you'll see that 80% of my posts on Instagram are without Instagram filters. Mm -hmm. as, a, as a matter of fact, there's a huge movement on Instagram right now. You'll see the hashtag no filter. i or hashtag no filter hashtag iPhone only. It means people are getting back to the basics of exposure and composition. Expose and compose. Slapping a filter doesn't make a good, a bad photograph good, period. It's that simple. So, you know, those of us that have been in the photography space before come to the mobile space with already kind of a, a visual style. Apps and filters and processing should refine Mark my words, they should refine our styles, not define our styles. Let the amateurs, let the filters define amateur styles, but for people that are taking it seriously, apps and filtering and all that stuff should refine your style because you know how you think and see. Find filters and processing techniques that support how you think, feel, and see. It's that simple. That's awesome. 
Well, um, I think we're coming right up on um, our, the end of our time today. So uh, first off, Jack, thank you so much for yeah, bringing all you. your goodies and all your toys and, and sharing your inspiration with us and everything. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. And I'll be sure to get all of this together and get a, uh, uh, when we put the post up on the website, I'll, I'll include links to as many of the products that I could keep <laughs> up with. <laughs> yeah, I will try it out, Eric. I'll try to. Uh, I'll keep this stuff out. I gotta run to a meeting now, but I'll try to see if I can't uh, post some links somewhere. Actually, if you go to, um, if you Google, I don't have it in a browser window, but if you look at Mac Tribe, you Google Mac Tribe, which is a Macintosh magazine, and uh, just Google my name. You know, Mac Tribe, comma Jack Hollingsworth, comma iPhoneography. There's a great two-part article in there that I believe I list all my favorite apps and I think that there are even links to some a lot of the products that I talk about. I know that it's available in the actual analog magazine. Yeah. Uh, everything that I said is in, in that article but I think if you check out on Google you'll probably find some of the same information in, um, in that Mac Tribe magazine. That's cool. Okay. And again, for those of you guys that want to actually see Jack in action, you can go to creativelive.com and search for Jack Hollingsworth, and you can buy his, uh, I believe it was a two-day seminar, all That's about right. yep. working with the iPhone. And I, I, is it $99? It's 70, 79 bucks. yep. So two, 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 yeah. two days of stuff, yeah. I mean, that's like a total bargain. So if you guys want to take, you know, really broaden your creative horizons again, you know, go check that out because it's totally um, a bargain. Hey, hey, Jack, before we run real quick, I had one question. Some mm -hmm. a friend of mine asked me to ask you yesterday. Uh, they said at one point you were doing kind of like excursions for people where you would go off somewhere exotic yes. and do like a little photo thing. Are you still doing that? Yes, I am. I, thanks for asking me and thanks for reminding me. I'm actually I'm in the process. We start wireframes uh, uh, this week, but we're building a new camera replacement app. Um, it will be similar to Camera Plus or similar to, for those that are, you know, uh, discriminating photographers in the mobile, similar to Matbox or maybe like the 645 Pro or Pro Camera. We'll have a couple other really pretty cool goodies. But once that's launched, we'll tie into a series of workshops that we're going to do uh, over the, the, the remaining uh, months of 2012 and into 2013 where we're taking sort of our workshops on board the Royal Clipper ship and traveling internationally. It's like, oh my God, if there's one thing as a photographer you want to put down on your bucket list, it's traveling on the largest sailing sh passenger sailing ship in the world called Star Clippers. And we've got some really, really very compelling and inspiring uh, trips that we're going to be doing later in the year and then into 213. Two wow. It's cool. So oh, take a note for thing. that after... Oh, go ahead, Eric. Yeah, save, your, right, so save, your money, save your money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And Jack, did you want to plug your garage sale? Uh, well, it, only for those that are not, not really, but uh, Dustin, I hope you come with your credit card so that I can you know, <laughs> take a couple thousand from you. But yeah, tom <laughs> tomorrow, I am, uh, it, no, no coincidence, I'm having a huge uh, garage sale, and it's 20 years worth of gear uh, that I've been paying a stupid amount of money on monthly storage. I think I have three storage units that I've been paying for gear that I don't even use anymore because of my mobile obsession. So I'm selling a lot of stuff, analog stuff, uh, California bounces, pocket wizards, C stands, Apple boxes, furniture, amours, blah, 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 blah. It's a, you, it will fill the studio that we're going to be in. It's a lot of cool stuff. Mamiya, Hasselblads, Lenses. Oh, is that medium format digital stuff you got going there? No digital. Nope, all no digital. analog stuff. Sorry, man. That's all right. I can get yeah. digital back later. That's fine. So uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, it, it will, it'll be worth kind of checking out if you live in Austin. And uh, we'll, my wife and I will tag all the stuff on Friday night when we load it in blurry-eyed and uh, hope to see some of you on Saturday. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, I know Eric's got a skedaddle, so... Um, Again, thank you, Jack, for coming. Um, and for those of you that are watching, this is Photog TV. We are on every Thursday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, bringing you guys the 
you know, the newest stuff about photography and what's going on. So, um, but for all of you guys that are watching now, uh, once the video is live, we would love it if you could repost the video in your feed um, or tweet it out. Um, in the meantime, make sure to follow uh, Jack on Twitter at PhotoJack, that's at symbol and then PhotoJack. Um, and you can also check out all of his stuff um, uh, through his Twitter feed and all of his multitude of websites and also on Instagram at Jack Hollingsworth. So uh, thank you again, everybody, for coming, and we will see you next week. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it, guys. Okay, you bet. Take well, care, guys. Care. See you. Ya.